So the situation for uh, Russian journalists is becoming dire with the hour, I would say. Uh, can you please give us an update what the status is at the moment and how are you and your staff? Yes, yes so, uh, you know, as you say, it's more dire by the hour, I would almost say by the minute. Um, as you know, I mean, in the last couple of months, uh, many media were already closed or chased out of the country. And only yesterday, uh, the two last remaining uh, big Russian independent channels, Dost and Echo Moskva, were taken off the air. Um, right. And uh, basically, almost nothing uh, remains here. There is, the, we still have Novia Gazeta, uh, which still is open. And we have the Moscow Times uh, in English and our Russian service which is growing incredibly fast now, of course, in these days. Um, but it's becoming more and more dangerous by the hour. First of all, there was the order that we cannot use the, war, the words war or invasion. Uh, we have to talk about this special operation, but so far we refuse to do that because you know, we are journalists, so we, Right, bring the right information, you know, fact-based right information. information, right. Uh, and then the second order was that we can only uh, uh, write about the war, publish official uh, uh, information from the Ministry of Defense, uh, which of course we also don't do because- No, uh, you're not a mouthpiece, no. We are not a propaganda, so, um, but now, the last thing, and that is really the last straw for all the independent journalists, is that they are introducing a new law, uh, which uh, means that you will get you risk to get 15 years of prison if you uh, 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 publish what they call fake news. And it is, uh, of course, up to them to decide what fake. What news is fake is. news is, and fake news is. Mm -hmm in this case, the truth. Um, so uh, now uh, in the, you know, the few independent journalists left here uh, all want to leave because it it's becomes untenable. It becomes impossible to keep operating. Uh, I had calls this morning with many colleagues of mine um, and everyone now is planning uh, how they how we can get our Russian teams uh, out of the country um, and have them continue in other places right. um, because I mean it's more imperative than ever that uh, Russian language news independent news continues I mean it's already it's a, you know hard to explain for people who don't live here how uh, uh, awful the impact of the propaganda is. There is non-stop uh, propaganda on Russian television that that puts the story completely upside down, uh, which you know doesn't show any of the pictures uh, of the bom bombardments on Kharkov and Kiev, uh, which shows so soldiers, Russian soldiers like liberators. Um, it's it's mind-boggling, but unfortunately. If you watch this day in, day out, year in, year out, it has an impact. Right. Uh, and many people uh, um, believe it or, or have doubts or are not sure. Um, and we are the only ones to tell them the real story. And this, this small group of a few independent outlets here uh, left. Right. Um, and I'm afraid that uh, in, the, in the coming days, when this law takes, force next week probably so quick um, yeah 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 this 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 is a law if 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 putin signs it next week it might be the fastest uh, uh past law in in recent history unbelievable are you also thinking of uh moving out yeah so i i had talks the, uh, today with uh, my journalist we are we have uh, 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 we are in discussions with the the, uh, the Dutch embassy in this case to provide us with uh, with emergency uh, visas. 
Um, so yeah, we are definitely contemplating uh, this and we are working on it. Uh, uh, right. Well, if, if we can help and support in any way, please let us know. You know that we are here today together and, and, and find expertise on how to continue the media lifeline um, not only for the Ukrainians but also for the Russians. Right. Um, um, we want to pick each other brains and 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 hear what is possible. Uh, there have been already uh, uh, great ideas. Um, this is vital for the region, and, and I think you are one of the few people who can testify in person why it is so important right. that there is a an independent media lifeline. Maybe it's good that you give your perspective on this as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it's crucial because we have to look beyond uh, uh, this crisis. We have to look beyond Putin. Uh, you know, one day uh, uh, Russia will uh, um, return to be a more normal country. Unfortunately, it looks incredibly grim now. Um, and, you know, basically it has moved from an author authoritarian country into a full-blown dictatorship today. Totally, yeah. In, um, in only a couple of weeks, I would say. Yeah, it's only in a couple of weeks that it's it's so harsh. Um, so, uh, but there is still a civil society. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, Russians that are embarrassed uh, that are, you know, I have all these, my Russian friends crying, you know, in my office, you know, I mean, how can we do this to, to our brothers in Ukraine right. and millions and millions of Russians uh, who feel terrible about that. Right. Um, and, you know, they have the right to be informed first. Uh, they have the right to be supported. Uh, and we should uh, uh, not make the mistake uh, to punish Putin, but to also punish all the Russians. Right. Um, because many, many, many Russians, especially younger people, the whole young generation, I mean, uh, they are appalled by everything that is happening now. And to keep information flowing to them, how difficult it is, um, is of essence. And, you know, uh, uh, in, the, in the Soviet times, uh, there was some is that, you know, we smuggled in uh, illegal printed books and, and, and even records and, and everything. And now we have to, you know, find, use the new technology um, to keep bringing this information to, to, to Russia. Right. Um, you and I have been talking uh, earlier in, uh, already about setting up hubs and uh, organizing hackathons, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So this is one of the ideas that we want to um, incorporate in this bigger idea, keeping yes. the media uh, yeah. lifeline alive. Yeah, I, I think it's vitally important that we have a couple of safe spaces where Russian and Ukrainian and Belarusian journalists, we're all in the same boat, um, can team up, can join, can learn from each other, can, uh, can develop joint uh, uh, projects, um, uh, because now we are splintered, you know, my, my team, uh, you know, one will go to Istanbul, the other will go to uh, Georgia, the third one will go to Czechoslovakia. And so now the problem is, if we are all, all splintered and, and, uh, and on our own, uh, we cannot develop as independent journalists. So we need to create hubs or safe spaces or whatever we call it. Uh, right. where people are able to come together um, and, uh, uh, and, and continue their very important work. Right. So, yeah, my question to you is, do you endorse this uh, media lifeline for the Ukraine and the larger region? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, of course. You know, how could I not? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here in, uh, the whole day you know, dealing with emergencies and, and how do we, you know, how do we keep our website in the air? You know, that's, that's uh, you know, so important. Uh, we, you know, our traffic has, has, you know, gone through the roof. We have now 10 million visitors per day. 
Um, so uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. We need to, you know, uh, we need to, you know, give them information. Yeah. I fully, fully agree. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And I wish you all the best and strength also for your team. Um, again, if there is anything we can do, uh, you know where to find us. Yes, we'll be in touch. Absolutely. Totally, totally. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Keep up the okay. spirit. Bye-bye. Thank so, you. Okay.